to create a gyotaku print of the silicone leaves, we are going to start with painting paint onto the leaf. Use one or two colors to completely coat the top surface of the leaf, getting into all of the cracks and crevices. Try not to get any paint on the outer edges of the leaf, um, but you do want to fully coat that top surface and all of the kind of bumps and divots. When the leaf is fully coated, pick it up and set it down on the table surface away from the paint. Then bring your paper on top of the leaf. Gently rub the whole surface of the leaf with the flat of your hand. You want to make sure you're getting all those cracks and crevices, but you're not letting the paper move. Flip your paper over and there is your print. At the end of the day, when everyone is done printing, please use a baby wipe to completely wipe off the paint off of the silicone so it doesn't stay there. So wipe gently but firmly to get all the paint off. You may need more than one In this one video, wipe. I'm going to show how to use texture paints to create texture on a piece of paper. To use the texture plate, you want to choose your first texture and decide which way you want to have it flipped. There's a positive and a negative side, um, which will end up making things look a little differently. This plate goes directly on the table and the paper gets placed on top. Then you choose your crayon. For texture rubbing crayons, you wanna make sure there's no paper and you lay it flat on the table. You don't hold it like a crayon to draw like this. You leave it flat on the table. You hold it on either side. You hold the plate, you hold your paper. So it's definitely a two-handed activity, standing up and rubbing across the surface of the texture. As you get to the edge of the texture, you can stop rubbing, obviously, and move the plate. In this case, I'm gonna try flipping the plate over so you can see what that different texture looks like and rub in a different space. So it gives a little bit different of a shape or design depending on which way it's flipped. Um, <clears throat> in the case with this particular project, my goal is to completely fill my artwork with texture. And I'm not worrying so much about edges. I'm just creating some textures across the whole thing and all the way off the edges of the paper. Then I might change texture. Let's set this down again. Choose a new color. Again, hold that crayon flat against the table and pressing down, rub. If you're going for more of an abstract texture like we have here, going over multiple directions, um, multiple ways will really help to cement the texture into the paper. So when you like the way that your texture looks, it's starting to feel full, you've got a lot of variety, you can go ahead and stop. For this artwork, for my texture, I'm going to take a leaf tracer and on the back of my texture paper, I am going to line it up with maybe a corner, maybe an edge, and then use a pencil to trace around my leaf shape. I can go ahead and cut out this leaf after putting my name on my leaf and saving it for later. If I want to have another leaf, I could, but one of these kinds. If you have a more complicated leaf tracer shape, it's important that you start with a bubble cut. So you go kind of around your shape.
shape without worrying too much about those close edges. This paper somebody else could use, but we're worried about this one. This is going to be your leaf. So what you want to do after you have that bubble cut is take your time and slow down and cut along your edges, kind of going out in a way. Remember with scissors, move the paper more than moving the scissors. Kind of keep those scissors pointing straight ahead of wherever you are, but move that paper around instead. So we can cut, the paper will bend, that's okay. And we're going to cut out this kind of fun, funky leaf shape. If it's easier to cut all the way off and get those pieces out of your way, do that. That's totally fine. You can have a bunch of little scraps. That doesn't matter. It doesn't all have to be one big piece. Some kids find it easier to make one big piece. Some people find it easier to make lots of little pieces. And to cut those all the way off after you've carefully followed your line. That's okay too. Whatever works for you... There's not really a wrong answer when you're cutting with. Now this piece is ready to be glued on. For chalk pastel stencils, you'll want to have your stencil, decide where you want it, and choose some colors that you can add into your stencil space. For these type of chalk pastels, you can pick them up with your fingers. You want to layer several colors together and fill in that space as much as you can. Then take a cotton ball and smudge outwards to fill in the space some more. Keep adding and layering and blending without moving that outer stencil. It's a little bit tricky, but it will turn out pretty cool. For a color pencil stencil, you will need, of course, a stencil again and your choice of color pencils. I like to start by tracing the stencil shape if needed. Um, once you've got that outer shape traced, you can take the stencil away. I chose to leave it there to help mask any um, oopses so I could color a little more quickly, but um, that turns out pretty cool. For a sponge stencil, you will want to decide what shape sponge you want and whether or not you're using those hot or cold colors. And then get your paint on your sponge by carefully dabbing it in the two colors that are on the plate. Um, make sure you kind of dab off your excess, but be careful about which direction your sponge is facing. Don't flip it around so the blue side's in the green or the green side's in the blue and kind of hold it from the center so you're not getting that paint on your fingers. Then pick where you want to um, have your leaf and press down with the center of your palm, lift up, and then you may repeat the stencil one or two times or the stamp one or two times if you'd like to. Be careful when returning the sponge onto the plate. Make sure you don't drop it like I did or flip it over the wrong way. We want to keep the blue and the green on the blue and the green side of the sponges or whatever two colors you're using. Okay. 